folks are encouraged each Sunday to be able to come and to uh, to share with you, be praying for you folks as you are uh, waiting upon the Lord for his leading in a pastor, and uh, we certainly uh, will continue to do that. If you would now turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew's account, of course, in chapter 4, some significant events have already happened. The beginning of the chapter is the temptation of Christ, where Satan had uh, come before him and sought to uh, bypass God's will and his plan and allow for, Satan, for, for Christ to, to have the kingdom now. And, of course, that's not God's plan. Christ isn't going to fall for that. And then in verse 12, we read this. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Another major milestone in the ministry of Christ was his forerunner, John, John the Baptist, being cast now into prison. This was a blow uh, to, to the disciples, a blow to Jesus even. For we see then after that news comes, and leaving Nazareth, verse 13, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Nepal and Nephilim, which it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the, excuse me, which might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. The, as, as these folks were now confronted with the person of Jesus, one thing that was very striking to me that was said was that they sat in darkness. The people that sat in darkness had seen a great light. Now, darkness is an unusual and interesting term in Scripture. It is used as a metaphor in many different ways and has many different uh, applications, you might say. Uh, for sometimes it's a symbol of judgment, as in Matthew 24, verse 29. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken it's also seen as a symbol of misery and of uh, adversity. It is in Isaiah chapter 8. And they shall look upon the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness and anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Uh, we all recognize that. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where it's been just dark, although the sun might be shining. Um, how How the mood kind of overtakes you. We refer to that often when it's a dark, dreary day. That, oh, it's just, you know, the, my mood is just bad today. Um, I just don't have that, that open and uplifting feeling today because it's dark outside. Darkness, though, is also a symbol or a, a metaphor of the human heart. If we could describe our world today, I think it would be legitimate to say that we live in darkness. People act in darkness. Just the events of just the last 24 hours demonstrates the darkness of the human heart. No hope, no, no life, no joy for anybody to go to the extents of what this individual did yesterday to President Trump is just an illustration of the darkness of the human heart and how sin can overtake and can control. Darkness, then, is not just the absence of light, but is a condition of the heart. These folks sat in darkness. Jesus came to minister to them. He came to be the light that all of us need, but they in particular needed, maybe even uh, uh, in his view more than others at the time. A great light would come to the region 
that Isaiah had even prophesied that they would be in darkness. Identifying the darkness and the world around us then is important. Darkness starts in the human heart. Acts chapter 26, verse, six, or verse 17, which is the commissioning of Paul. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. The Apostle Paul would be sent out to the world which was full of darkness. Now, not that the Gentiles were any more dark than the Jews, but that was going to be his focus in his ministry, was to go to the darkness of the Gentile world. He was there to minister to them the, the truth in the light of Christ. Darkness causes blindness. Have you ever been in true darkness? Now, some, some would like to illustrate this by saying, well, you know, like the darkness of the, of the cave, uh, some cavern. Uh, uh, so when you hold your hand in front of your face and you can't see, that's certainly darkness. I want to tell you a little story, though, uh, of a time when darkness overtook me. Uh, three of us had gone out. We were tracking a deer. A friend of ours had shot this deer, and uh, uh, he didn't put a good shot on it, so we were tracking it. And of the three of us, two of us were experienced trackers, and one was not. As we started the blood trail, we realized this was going to be a long track. It was not a good shot. Well, after we had been tracking for about an hour, a storm came in. And it rained, and it poured, and you know what that does to a blood trail. It just was getting more and more difficult by the moment. Well, not only was it more and more difficult, but lightning's crashing around you. And then I had my phone, because I thought, well, he told me it was going to be a good shot, told me it was going to be an easy track. Of course, opposite was true. So I didn't have my lapel compass on. I just had my phone. Well, my phone for a compass is fine until it pours for about an hour. Guess what happened to my phone? Yep, it failed. Well, now we are in the middle of the swamp, a good mile in, and uh, uh, it's pitch black out, raining harder than hard. We did find the deer, by the way, but after we found the deer, it was like the other two said, where do we go? And I said, well, we can't backtrack because the trail is gone. The blood trail is gone. So where do we go? So, you know, the other two, well, one was, let's just say he lost it. He, he was afraid. The other one was just confounded, like, are we going to spend the night out here? Let's find a place to stay, you know, something. Uh, I said, no, no, let's, we just have to get our bearings. We just have to find out where south is at because we knew that's the direction we had to go and uh so yeah, i got up on this little knoll and finally i saw just a glimmer of light or just a not even a light like a beam of light but just a, a little glow and i said that's south it's got to be closest closest lights around her to the south of us the other two were like, no, 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 we just better stay here, stay here till morning. I'm not staying in the morning. You guys can stay till morning if you want. I'm going where I know there's light. If there's light, there's people. So I started to go on. Well, they started to follow. And long story short, eventually we found our way out of that swamp right to his backyard. I'm not saying I'm this wonderful tracker or anything like that. But I used my head enough to say, light means people. Light is the closest one around is where the house we're going to. We're going to go that way. Darkness can completely overwhelm you if you allow it to. It can disguise all reason and all sanity with the sense of hopelessness. If there's one thing that I truly believe characterizes our world today, it's the result of a sinful heart, and that is hopelessness. People 
are living for the day with no hope for tomorrow, no hope for the future. If there's a reason why the world is in the situation it is, it's because they have no hope. Now, my friend, as believers in Christ, do we have hope? We referred to it a couple of weeks ago in the message. We have the hope lying within us that mankind needs. It is a hope of eternal life. It is a hope of salvation in Christ. Not one of us, if we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, should live in darkness. Now, darkness surrounds us because of our society, because of our even fallen nature. But you know what? We do not have to be as others living with no hope. So we live with what? Light. Now, there's one thing also about darkness I want us to see. Through darkness is the absence of light. In other words, you can't have both. If it's true darkness, there's no light. If there's light at all, there is color. It's, 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 uh, it, it's something other than darkness. For all of us who know Christ as our Savior, even though we may feel the gloominess of the day, we may be touched by the darkness of our society, none of us have to live in true darkness. None of us. But rather, we can understand and live in the light. In darkness, there is no forgiveness of sin. In darkness, the human heart is at its natural state, separated from God. In darkness, we have no hope, but in Christ we do. Those who uh, live in darkness have the effect of the shadow of death covering everything that they do, everything that they know, and everything that they see. The darkness is the dread and doom that looms in the heart that is separated from God. Now, back to that story about being lost in the woods. I, I knew those two fellows really, really well. Both of them were in the church that I pastored. Both of them I had seen make professions of faith at some point in time. I was surprised by their reactions. The one fellow who lost it, I truly mean he lost it. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a man so afraid for no reason. I mean, we're a mile from the house. It's the middle, well, it's in fall, and it was cold out, but it's not like hypothermic cold. And it's raining, and it's thundering, and it's lightning, and all that kind of stuff. But to be basically overwhelmed on your knees in fear, come on, get over it. Um, uh, you know, the other fellow was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I was surprised that darkness had such an impact. But you know what? Darkness has an impact on a, on a lot of folks. And if they don't know Christ, it'll have a negative impact that you'll never imagine could happen. You see, it's the darkness of the human heart that causes the sinfulness of that same heart to be expressed so openly, so blatantly. We, in our, in our spiritual understanding of things, might have a difficult time relating to that. To see somebody do something so, so awful, so heinous, so sinful, obviously, we might say to ourselves, how could they ever do that? Well, it's the darkness of their heart that's overtaking them at that time. It's the expression of being lost and without Christ and no hope in this world. Darkness will cause people to do things that we might say would be impossible otherwise. And it covers all mankind. 
Romans 5.12 says, for, by, for as by one man sin entered into the world, so death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all that have, for all have sinned. Who has a dark heart? Well, the reality is that every single one of us have a dark heart. Because in our natural state, we are all sinners and separated from God. The sinfulness of our world should never surprise us. The depths of their depravity should never surprise us. But also should never it be a surprise to any of us that sin still wants to have rule and reign over us as well. You ever be driving along or just talking with somebody or, or doing something common in every day, and all of a sudden uh, an evil, wicked, awful thought enters into your heart or mind? I don't mean when you're driving and somebody's slow in front of you. That's not what I mean. But but uh, you ever have that, that thought in your mind like, where did that come from? Oh, my friend, we're not immune to the darkness of our hearts. But we do have the remedy for that darkness. We have the person of Jesus Christ living in us. But we must place ourselves under his control and, under, and be obedient to him, desiring to honor him in our lives, not giving in to the darkness of our own heart. We can try to deny it. The world does this often. I'm okay, you're okay. To cover it up, my problem is X, Y, Z. And, and I don't mean the other X, Y, Zs, the, the, those things. I just mean my problem is not my, my fault. No. I want to be as kind as I can, but as blunt as I need to tell us all that we have a problem, and it's called sin. And without Christ, we are locked and lost into our sin. Verse 16. Go back to the text, if you would, please. And the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region in the shadow of death is light sprung up. To those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, of the light has sprung up. Jesus had entered into their midst. And Jesus is the light that we all need. John chapter 1, verses 5 and on through 11 say this, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, that is John, John the Baptist. He was not the light. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Speaking of Jesus, the light of the world, the one that each and every person on this earth who is locked and lost into darkness, must recognize that light. Now back to the story once again. You know what? That light was there the whole time we were lost. It was there. It, didn't go, it hadn't gone anywhere. A few things hindered it. The lightning shocked us, shocked our eyes. We couldn't see right after the lightning. That kept the, the light hidden. The, the, the trees kept the light hidden. But you know what? Once I was able to locate the light, we were able to see our way out. Jesus came to the region 
of that world at that time that had rejected all the light. But he came to show them the true light. And once they saw the light, they would live. And my friend, that is the truth that all of us need to embrace. That the light is there. Jesus, the Son of God, has come to give us light and life. But we must see him and him alone. There is no other alternative, no other way out, no other light that we must see but that one true light that is Christ. The Greek word here for light is phos. We get our term phosphorescent from that. But he is not just a light. He is the light. There are all kinds of lights in this world, and some distract us. Some hinder us from seeing that true light. Interestingly, here in verse 16, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light. No, 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 no. Look a little closer in your text, folks. They saw great light. The word great there is mega, mega light. They saw the greatest light. They were confronted with the true light. Now, I, I like photography. Anybody else here like photography? I love photography. You know, one of the base Definitions of photography is chasing light. And you know that chasing light gives you a greater understanding of what light really is all about. And light has color. We think of light just being bright. It's light. But you know the, the color of the lights overhead here are very yellow. The color of true light is so brilliant that none of us can stand in its presence. Jesus is the true light. He is the light above all lights. You ever talk with somebody and all of a sudden they completely lose their concentration? They're off in another world, off in another place, talking about something else? We were talking with a contractor one day, and he's... He's on, on, we're at the tailgate of the truck, and we're talking about the, the project that we're going to be doing, and all of a sudden, a duck flies overhead. And this man, who is a contractor, and we're talking about, about business, all of a sudden looks up and says, duck. And I said, squirrel. Yeah, because he's so easily distracted. I wondered if he was going to be a good contractor or not. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> there are lots of lights out there, and lights can grab our attention. And sometimes completely draw us away from the true light that we need to be focusing on. I think our world is having a light problem. There are all kinds of lights out there that draw us away from the true light. We must see the light that is in Christ. Second Timothy chapter 1, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought light and immortality to light through the gospel. There's no greater light in our world and no more needed light in our world than the message of Christ, the gospel, the good news. If there's one thing that we have to share that the world will never have, it is the true light of Christ. How involved, my friend, are you as an individual in seeking to share that light? Not being the light, now, yes, we are all to be testimonies and witnesses for Christ, but we can never be that true light. We can point men to the light, but we are not that light. But each of us have the ministry of sharing Christ 
to the world around us. Therefore, we must be those who point people to that one true light. The reaction to the light is always going to be different. Verse 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus' message to the world around was repent from the position that you're presently in, lost in your sin, and come to him. Everything reacts differently to light. Some are drawn to it, some are mesmerized by it, and some are repelled by its brilliance. So it is with mankind in Christ. Jesus came and presented himself as the light of the world. It is not with indifference, but with power and authority. He preached repentance. Jesus came not to coddle the world, not to agree with the world, not to have accolades heaped upon him by the world, but rather to confront the world on their condition that they were in darkness. Their sin had separated them from God and that he had come to give them salvation if only they would believe. Repentance is not a multiple choice list of options or the opportunity to do it your own way. You'll hear me many times probably as I have opportunity to, to minister refer to our generation as being the Burger King mentality generation. Because if there's anything I believe that, that represents the mindset of the world today, it's have it your way. My friend, we cannot have it our way. Because God has not given us that option. God is very absolute in what he has said and what he has done and the way of salvation that he has given. There is not a list of options. The old line that some have used that religion is like a wagon wheel. All spokes point to the sinner. So it doesn't matter what religion you are. What you, you honestly believe, it's just that you believe something because all avenues point toward God, is heresy. It's heresy. Not everything points toward God. There are many, many faiths in our world that are completely man-centered and God-avoiding. <laughs> To repent is to change one mind, one's mind concerning the sinfulness of our heart. Often the, the, the word repentance is used by illustrating it as turning away from one into another. But what is it that somebody needs to turn away from? They need to turn away from their own condition, who they are. What characterizes any individual in this world before a holy and almighty God. It's their condition of the heart, that they're separated from him. What has separated us from God? Our sin. John chapter 3, you, you, you'll know these verses, right? He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil is hateth light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You see, if we don't come to Christ, that is not what condemns us. Our condemnation is already there. We're condemned already. Coming to Christ gives us the, the privilege of being brought into fellowship with him, being redeemed by him. It is turning away from 
what we were, lost in our sin, condemned before God, and turning to the Savior who loves us and gave himself for us. It's receiving that which each of us need. It's being given the relationship in Christ that each of us need. Repentance, then, is not negative. It's positive. It's saying, this is who I was, lost in darkness in this world with no hope. But now, in Christ, I have redemption and eternal life, and I do have hope. My life can change from hopelessness to true joy and life in Christ. For each and every one of us, then repentance is absolutely essential. Repentance, understanding that we who, who are in Christ have been given the greatest change of all mankind, new life in him. But the decision must be made. It doesn't just happen to you. It, doesn't just, it isn't just that one day you wake up and, oh, I guess I'm saved now. That's not the way it works. John 14 says this, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In order for any of us, because we're all lost in sin, for any of us who see the light, we must go to the light. We must believe the light. We must be saved by the light. So there must be a decision, a choice on the heart and life of each individual whether or not we will come to Christ and trust him to be our Savior. And Jesus doesn't make it multiple choice, does he? It's him or nothing. And if you choose yourself, you're going to be lost. You're going to continue to be lost, I should say. You'll stay in your condemnation. You'll stay in the darkness. And eventually that darkness, my friend, will be cast into eternal darkness, eternal separation from the Father. We call it a place of hell, for it is eternal punishment. We are separated already, we are condemned already, but we will stay that way for eternity, separated from God. But in coming to Christ, that changes. And now we have heaven to look forward to, eternity with him. I think John 14, 6 is honestly one of those verses that every believer should have stamped in their head and their heart, that no man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus is the light. Identifying darkness should be easy for all of us. It's not a location but a condition. It is the condition of the human heart, separated from God. Seeing the light has been presented to each and every one of us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost whom we are. But then reacting to the light is a choice, a decision that every individual must make in their heart and life, whether or not we will believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or not. My friend, today, if you're here and without Christ, you're, st you're already lost in your darkness. You're already condemned before the Father. You didn't have to do anything special. You didn't have to do anything heinous. You didn't have to be that, that shooter who tried to take all of, all of our society into his own hands yesterday. You don't have to do anything like that. We're already lost in our sin. But you've been exposed to the light. You've seen that glimmer off in the distance. 
but the choice is yours. Will you come to him today? Will you believe him today? Will you receive the gift that he's given for all to believe today and be saved? I pray you will. But I also want to encourage and challenge each of us as believers today that will you be that one who shares the light in the world around you. That example and testimony of Jesus Christ in your world, pointing people to the one true light. Let's pray. Father, thank you. You love us so much that you didn't leave us lost in our sin. You allowed for us to be saved if we would only put our faith and trust in the person of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today that any individual here who is realizing their own lost state, that they are without Christ, never having trusted him to be their Lord and Savior, that today would be that day where you would call them to yourself, that they would then, in seeing the light, believe in him. Father, help each one of us, though, who do know Christ, to rejoice in that light, to glorify the light, but then to point others to that light who is none other than Christ and him alone. We pray in thy name. Amen.